Welcome back for another video on the best YouTube channel ever. Today's video will be about the gangster profile of Miguel Rivera. Miguel is from the Linwood Mob Gang. He had Linwood Mob tattoos on his head, chest, and hand. Late at night on February 27, 2017, 52-year-old Santiago Morales was in his car in a parking lot on Long Beach Boulevard near Sambor Avenue in Linwood. Santiago Morales is from the 18th Street Gang. The lot was behind commercial buildings and located in Segundo's gang territory. Morales had visors covering the front and rear windows of his car. Surveillance video from a nearby business depicted two men approach Morales' car, look inside, and walked away. Both men wore hoodies and their faces were not visible. The interior lights of the car flashed and a man, alleged to be Rivera, approached the driver's side. Both men ran away. After receiving a call for service, a sheriff's deputy responded to the parking lot around 8 a.m. the next day. The deputy found Morales, fully reclined, covered by a blanket up to his mid-chest and shattered glass inside the car. The car was running. No weapons were visible. A search of Morales' vehicle yielded a simulated firearm wrapped in a sock inside a bag that was wedged between the headrest of the driver's seat and the back seat. Morales may have been conscious for a few minutes after being shot. The bullet entered Morales' left upper arm, exited through the other side, and entered his chest. The bullet perforated his left lung, likely causing death within a few minutes. Morales had meth, PCP, and marijuana in his system at the time of his death. There was no evidence or indication Miguel Rivera from Linwood Mob Gang and Santiago Morales from 18th Street knew each other. On March 6, 2017, Miguel Rivera was acquainted with Daniel Nunez, who was an Evil Clan gang member. Linwood Mob and Evil Clan were not enemies. Lizette Rivera was Nunez's girlfriend. Lizette associated with members of the Linwood Mob gang, and she knew Rivera as Nutty or Get Him. Lizette and Nunez frequently socialized at David Cricket Nakiso's home, a Linwood Mob hangout. Nakiso, a senior member of Linwood Mop, was the head of the gang. Lizette and Nunez had sold firearms to Nakiso in the past. Lizette sometimes committed crimes for the gang. Nunez, who was also known as Scooby, was a hothead and used his large size to intimidate people. Lizette and Nunez used meth daily and sold drugs and engaged in check fraud. Rivera, Nikiso, and others knew Nunez abused Lizette as they had seen her with black eyes and a busted lip. Shortly before being shot, Nunez struck Lizette and sprayed her with pepper spray. On occasions when Nunez struck her, Lizette would call Nikiso to pick her up. One time Nunez approached, chased, and menaced Lizette with a ratchet. Shortly before the shooting, Nunez struck Lizette who called Nikiso for help. Rivera arrived in a car driven by a woman to pick up Lizette. As Lizette got into the car, Rivera and Nunez exchanged words and Nunez insulted the Linwood mob. Rivera pointed a handgun at Nunez, who again insulted Rivera's gang and called Rivera a B-I-T-C-H. Lizette urged Rivera to stay in the car and she drove off with him. Nunez was furious. Later, Nunez called Lizette numerous times and called other members of the Linwood mob. Nunez called Nikiso to complain that Rivera had put a gun on him, but did not mention insulting the Linwood mob. The Linwood mob wanted to check Rivera. At the time, Nikiso gave Nunez the green light to assault Rivera the next time he saw him. Nikiso also berated Rivera for getting involved in Nunez's domestic dispute. After the confrontation, Lizette and Rivera hid out for a while. Lizette was angry because she felt she was being forced to choose between Nunez and Rivera. Rivera agreed to make amends with Nunez, and Rivera called Nunez. Nunez was not interested, however, and told Rivera he had a green light to beat him up. Nunez was angry with Rivera because Rivera did not deliver drugs and Nunez had paid Rivera $50 to buy for him. After complaining about the failed drug deal to Nikiso, Nunez got another green light to assault Rivera. Rivera went into hiding. Rivera told Lizette about the Morales shooting, telling her he had been involved in a shootout with someone on Long Beach Boulevard. 
Rivera believed it involved someone from Segundo's gang, but he was not sure. Lizette did not believe him because she had not heard about it the day of Nunez's shooting. Lizette went to Nikiso's house to wait for Rivera to arrive. Rivera was going to give Lizette a ride to the county's general relief office in Compton. Rivera, Jose Romero, nicknamed Face, another gang member known as Stranger, and a woman, Lizette, believed was Face's girlfriend, picked her up. Face was a Linwood mob member. On the way, the group stopped at a parking lot memorial that had been set up for Morales. Rivera got out of the car and spat on the memorial. After he got back into the car, he said to Lizette, See, I wasn't lying. A surveillance video of the stop at the memorial was played for the jury. It showed Rivera walking toward the memorial, but it was unclear if Rivera was spitting. During the drive, Lizette saw Face display a handgun. The handgun was passed around. After discussion of who would hold the gun, it was given to Rivera. Lizette spent about an hour at the relief office. On the way back from the relief office, they stopped at a gas station near the 91 freeway. Inside, a customer and Face exchanged words with each other. Lizette attempted to break up the altercation because everyone in the store was looking and she did not want anyone to call the police. Rivera left the store but turned to go back in. Lizette reminded him there were cameras everywhere. They all left the store. Surveillance video from the gas station was played for the jury. When they left the gas station, Rivera was angry because he believed Face had caused Rivera to be disrespected and that Face should have shown the man in the store that he wasn't a B-I-T-C-H. After dropping Stranger off, they headed to Nikiso's house. Rivera continued to argue with Face and wanted to get out of the car. Lizette had been texting Nunez and told him that she was returning from the relief office. She told him who was in the car and Nunez said he could go to Nikiso's and pick her up. She told him not to go to Nikiso's because of the previous altercation between Rivera and Nunez and she did not want them to run into each other again. She told Nunez she would meet him halfway. Lizette let Nunez know that Rivera had a gun. Nunez, however, wanted to confront Rivera and settle a debt with Nikiso. Lizette wanted to pick up her bike from Nikiso's yard. Nikiso lived in a converted garage on 2nd Avenue in Linwood, and the yard gate was locked. The garage fronted an alley. Nikiso, Face, and Rivera were in Nikiso's garage. Lizette asked for the key to the yard gate. Lizette went to the garage and heard Nikiso talking about Nunez's drug debt. She offered to pay it, but Nikiso refused. Lizette found his refusal strange because Nunez and Nikiso had a close bond. Lizette gave Nikiso a $20 bill and started to hand him a second $20 bill, but Rivera grabbed it. Rivera said he was tired of Nunez getting a pass. In between the time, Lizette handed Nikiso the first and second $20 bills. She heard Nunez's distinctive whistle coming from the alley behind the garage. Lizette was afraid and asked Nikiso if he had the gun. He told her he did. Nunez whistled again and Lizette went to the gate. Lizette thought it was strange they could not find the key because they never lose it. Nunez told Lizette they were intentionally not letting her get her bike. Lizette was ready to jump the gate, but Nunez told her not to because it was going to be all bad if she did. Face berated Nunez for owning money to Nikiso. Lizette was surprised because Face was unusually bold in speaking to Nunez. Face asked why Nunez did not pay Nikiso for the drugs. Lizette told Face she had paid Nikiso and Nunez became angrier. Lizette went back inside to find the key. Lizette heard someone walking on the gravel in the alleyway. She said her heart fell to her stomach. She ran outside and saw Rivera approaching. Nunez's back was to Rivera because he was still talking to Face. Lizette warned Nunez that Rivera was approaching. Nunez shifted toward Rivera. Lizette was holding Nunez's hand. Nunez asked Rivera, what is your problem? And Lizette tried to calm Nunez down. Lizette at the time believed the gun was still inside because Nikisa told her he had the gun. She did not want a fight to break out. Rivera was staring at Nunez. Nunez had let go of Lizette's hand. Nunez pulled his pants up as he stepped toward Rivera. Rivera pulled a gun out and shot Nunez twice. Lizette jumped over the gate, screaming at the top of her lungs. Her phone fell. Nunez was still standing and told Lizette he was okay. She laid him on the ground. Nikiso and Face were gone, and the garage door was shut. Rivera ran away, and Lizette began screaming for someone to call 911. 
Nunez began convulsing and told her he could not breathe. Lizette reached into Nunez's pocket to see if she could find a phone, but instead found a drill. The drill had a silver tip. Later, police on the scene of the shooting observed a portion of the drill was outside Nunez's waistband. The fire department arrived, gave Nunez CPR, and took him away in an ambulance. Nunez sustained gunshot wounds to the upper right back and right side of the chest. One bullet entered his upper right back, slightly to the midline, traveled sharply downward from right to left, perforated to the right lung, diaphragm, and liver, and ended up near the spine. The second bullet perforated the right lung, diagram, and spleen, and exited on the left side of the chest. Nunez had meth in his system at the time of his death. After they arrived, Deputy spoke to Lizette about the Nunez shooting. She did not tell him she knew who shot Nunez. Lizette was afraid to say anything because Nikisa and others were standing outside the garage. She did tell Deputy she saw the interaction between Nunez and the shooter and saw the shooter approach through the alley. Lizette heard Nunez ask the man if he had a problem and the man shot Nunez twice and fled. Later on March 7, 2017, Lizette spoke to two deputies at the sheriff's station and told them what had happened. Lizette was afraid of retaliation for talking to the police and was concerned for her personal safety. Nakisa tried to contact her after the shooting, but she did not talk to anyone because she was scared. Nakisa and three other men visited her at the hotel room where she had been staying after the shooting and brought her bike. Nakisa tried to persuade her to leave with them. Later, Nikiso visited Lizette at a different motel and said Nunez was a piece of shit and deserved to die. Eventually, law enforcement provided funds for her to relocate and she stayed at a motel. Lizette was still relocated at the time of trial. In a March 9, 2017 interview with the sheriff's deputy, Lizette recounted the events surrounding Morales' shooting. She told the deputy what Rivera had told her about his conflict with Morales in the shooting. Rivera's conduct at the memorial and Rivera's shooting of Nunez. Rivera told Lizette there was a shootout with some guy from Segundos. She added that Nunez recently had provoked members of the Paragon's gang by verbally insulting them and driving his vehicle at them. The Paragon's responded by shooting at Nunez's truck. Rivera was arrested on April 25, 2017. Detectives informed Rivera at an interview conducted that day that he was under arrest for the Morales and Nunez shootings. Both murders had been committed with a 9mm handgun, and Sheriff's Department Forensics was determining whether the shootings were committed with the same weapon. After Rivera denied involvement in the shootings, detectives told him there was surveillance video of the Morales shooting and that he was in the video. Rivera then admitted being at the scene of the memorial. Rivera also told detectives that Face and Demon were the shooters. Rivera indicated he was saddened by Morales' death and visited the memorial. On April 25, 2017, the sheriff's detectives conducted a Perkins operation. Rivera did not admit his involvement in the shootings. During a second Perkins operation conducted the next day, Rivera told his cellmate and undercover informant that he was being charged with three murders but did not know what the third one was. According to Rivera, the authorities had numerous descriptions of the suspect, but none fit him. Rivera stated the second murder was in the alley behind Big Homie's house. Rivera admitted he was on video for the first murder, but his face was covered, and he believed the detective lied when he said they could see his face. The detectives knew he was involved in the second murder. However, because it was the same gun, he called Nunez a snitch. A comparison of the bullets from both victims established they had been fired from the same weapon. Two shell casings were found in the alley where Nunez was shot. No casings were found where Morales was shot. Miguel Rivera from Linwood Mob Gang was convicted of both murders of 18th Street member Santiago Morales and Evil Clan member Daniel Nunez, and the two fell in possession of a firearm counts. The jury found true the firearm use allegations and that the crimes were gang related. Miguel Rivera from Linwood Mob Gang was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole plus 39 years and 4 months.